Good evening. Welcome to Would I Lie to You, the show with tall tales and tantalising truths. On David Mitchell's team tonight, an award-winning DJ, actor and presenter, it's Craig Charles. <laughs> and a stand-up comic joining us for her second time, it's Shazia Mirza. Lee Max team tonight. He's a broadcaster, journalist, and king of the eggheads. It's Jeremy Vine. Thank you. Thank you. And a rising star of stand up comedy, Amy Gledhill. <laughs> well, we begin with round one Home Truths, where our panelists read out a statement from the card in front of them. Now, to make things harder, they've never seen the card before, they have no idea what they'll be faced with. It's up to the opposing team to sort the fact from the fiction. Craig is first up tonight. I once made a 72 hour round trip to Australia just to pick up a really rare record because I couldn't risk it getting damaged in the post. These two. <laughs> wow. What was the record? 100-metre sprint? <laughs> <laughs> it was a, a rare Northern Soul record. By? Uh, Frank Wilson. And what was the record called? It was called Do I Love You, Indeed I Do. It was originally printed and they were, all 500 presses were smashed because uh, Motown didn't like it. But two survived, well, two knowingly survived. We thought we'd find a third one. Is it a single or an album? It's a seven-inch. Sorry, but the, the, flying all that way for a seven-inch doesn't seem like a very good use of... <laughs> <laughs> of time... Of time or money. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the one that we know of, that I know of, sold for £28,000, so it's quite... A... And how much were you paying for it? Well, we thought we could get it for about nine grand. Where did you get it? Was it from eBay or something? No, it was just from some, some research. People, someone phoned up and said he thinks she's got a copy of it in Melbourne, Australia. OK. So I went over on, on, on Qantas. So when you got there, did the third one exist? It did exist, yeah, but it was in such a bad state. It was like someone had glued it back together. So you couldn't play it? No, you couldn't play it, no. Craig, could you do a bit of the song? <laughs> do I love you? Do I love you? Do I oh, it was scratched, wasn't it? Presume you'd have been expected, if you'd have brought it back, expected to pay import duty? I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> you might not have been expected it, but I suspect they were. <laughs> Jeremy, what do you think? just seems so impractical to fly that distance and pay that amount of money to buy something. So I'm, I'm edging towards lie here. Did you offer him anything? I did offer him uh, £5,000. And he said no. And I brought it home. Oh! Oh, you did buy you, it? So yeah, you've got yeah. it now, have you? Yeah. This now sounds true. I think it's true. Yeah, yeah, well, I think he's well known for his love of music, so he might be mad enough to do that. We'll say it's true. Saying it's true. They think it's true, Craig. Was it true or were you telling us a lie? I was telling you... A lie. Oh! <laughs> yes, it's a lie. Craig didn't fly to Australia just to pick up a record. Uh, Shazia, you're next. I was once grounded when my parents saw a picture of me in the local paper doing something I shouldn't. <laughs> you were doing something you shouldn't? Yeah, I had, be I had uh, escaped. Escaped from where? <laughs> I, I'd escaped from the house. <laughs> were you, uh, I mean, how dark is this story going to get? How old were you when this happened, Shazia? 14. And how did you escape? Um, I, got, I got some bed sheets um, and I, I knotted them together, threw them out the window, climbed down them and I, I left the house. Why? I, I wanted to go out for the night, to a nightclub. What oh, a nightclub. What time did you sneak out? Oh, about uh, 11 o'clock at night. And what time did you get back in? About 4 o'clock in the morning. Bed sheet mm. still hanging from window? Yeah. How many stories? I mean, I don't believe this one to start with, but how many... <laughs> <laughs> how many stories high were you? Three. You were three? Three stories. <laughs> what did you tie the bed sheets to? Uh, to each other. But... <laughs> Wow! <laughs> you need something at the other end. What's the end tied to? Oh, it was tied to the window. OK, 
OK, you, you go to this nightclub. Why is your picture ending up in the paper? There were some famous people in there. Oh, tell us. Well, there was Joan Collins. What? <laughs> Boy George. Boy George, he's big, he's a big name. You be 40. I be 54. <laughs> So how did you end up in the photo? That's what we need to Well, be what clear happened on. was when the nightclub ended about four o'clock, um, there was like no taxis and I didn't know how I was gonna get home. So I asked Boy George. Oh, here we go. <laughs> here we go. I asked Boy George if he would give me a piggyback home. <laughs> and did he say, Do you really want to hurt me? <laughs> Where does the photo come in? What, what was in the photo? Well, um, he said to me, oh, you look great. Let's have a picture together. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and what did your parents say when they saw the paper? What, how did they confront you? They rang up the newspaper and they said, that's not my daughter. Well, hang on. What, what, hang on, <laughs> hang on. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, before you get to that bit of mad information, <laughs> how, how did it transpire in the next day? I want to know that bit. Were you still in bed when they got the paper? Yes. Um, what time was this now? Was it, an, it must have been an evening paper, then. Comes out about midday, I think. My dad gets the paper <laughs> and he's, the, he opens it up and there's a picture of... Um, me with Boy George. Um, it, it was had my name, and he said, "Oh, you gave had your name. name in it." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your father rang the paper. That's correct. And there was a huge row. He said, "That's not my daughter. You've put a picture in the paper saying it's my daughter, and it's not my daughter." <laughs> and he said, "Yes, it is your daughter." Well, how did he know on the other end of the phone? <laughs> exactly. Oh, but it could God. be the dad of another Shazia Mirza <laughs> who oh. looks nothing like you. But if he but says... But there aren't that many Shazia Mirza. Yes. I know, but if he's rang up and said, that's not, my, that's not Shazia Mirza, the guy on the other end isn't immediately going to go, yes, it is. <laughs> well, no, but he said, there's a picture of this girl with the boy George. You said it's Shazia Mirza. It's not my daughter. OK, and what did the man say? Yes, it is. And how... But... <laughs> <laughs> No, it's not. <laughs> but he must have recognised you from the picture. Who? My dad? Yes. <laughs> my dad says, like, there's no way it could be me, because I'm asleep. Yes, but he could see the picture. I mean, was he not good with faces? Yeah, well, they, he thought that they had just got this photo of me from somewhere right. and just shoved it in the paper. So how was it resolved, Shazia? Well, it wasn't resolved. Um, How does your story end? Let me put it like that. <laughs> I'm hoping quite soon. <laughs> it did. Well, the thing was, it ended when my dad said, um, uh, you, uh, you're never going to be allowed out ever again. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. So now he does think it's you. No, he's saying this to the newspaper man. <laughs> With this sort of irresponsible reporting, you're never allowed out of your house again. Did he knock on your door? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He comes in. Yeah. And then what was said next? He said, look. <gasps> what was he wearing? <laughs> <laughs> That's the newspaper. Yeah, and he says... <laughs> and he goes, look at this. <laughs> Go on. I... I know where you oh. were last night. Oh, I'm getting angry with this story now. <laughs> What's the junction between that is not my daughter well, and where the hell, why were you out last the night? The man at the paper... He doesn't well, know you! He, was, <laughs> he convinced my dad that that person was me. More than your face! <laughs> What are you thinking? I'm starting to have my doubts about this one. <laughs> <laughs> OK, 
I know this sounds a crazy point of detail, but the idea that a, a newspaper could print the story within three hours of the, the nightclub closing... Of everything she said, <laughs> the time the newspaper comes out is the one... I mean, to me, that's fine. It's everything else. It's just... It's, it's the shit. Yeah, it's, boy George, piggyback, no, 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 Birmingham no, 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 nightclub. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's all fine. Who yeah. was that? Oh, it's Joan Collins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Man doesn't recognise his own daughter. No, she didn't, yeah. No problem. What time does the paper come out? Midday, she's lying. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Amy? What do you think? <laughs> I think it's a lie, cos it's hard to pick, a, like, a bit that could be true. Yeah. <laughs> You're saying it's a lie. Well, say right, it's a lie. Shazia, they're, they're pretty convinced it's a lie. Was it a lie, or were you telling the truth? I'm afraid it's the truth. <laughs> Shazia was grounded after her parents saw her picture in the paper, and here is that no. picture oh. of Shazia with Boy George. Oh. Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. This week, each of Lee's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest. It's up to David's team to spot who's telling the truth. So please welcome this week's special guest, Kate. <laughs> So, Amy, what is Kate to you? So, this is Kate, and we worked together in the same office for three months before we realised we were actually living in the same house. <laughs> right. <laughs> Jeremy, how do you know Kate? This is Kate. Um, when she got nervous on eggheads, I came up with a unique way of calming her down. <laughs> <laughs> And finally, Lee, what is your relationship with Kate? This is Kate, and I accidentally cut the trunk off her topiary elephant. <laughs> <laughs> so, there we have it. <laughs> David's team, where will you begin? <laughs> OK, so, for three months, Amy, yeah. you, you, what, what, what was the office? Uh, it was cold calling in yeah. Leeds to sell kitchens. Right. And you both were working there. Mm -hmm. But when was this? Um, this was about 2012, and I was living in a big shared house. Yeah. So how did it <laughs> transpire, this discovery? Um, so we... we weren't great friends, no offence, Kit. We, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I knew we were at work, I sort of knew her to sort of say hello to, things like that. Yeah. Um, how many people working at this cold oh, calling centre? felt like millions, and there were shifts, so well, you it didn't... Won't, it won't have been millions, so... <laughs> <laughs> um, L less than a million, let's less say. Than, okay. <laughs> I'd say maybe a hundred, a hundred people. I think the key to this is the house, isn't it? Though, how big was the house? So it was, it was five bedroom, but I'm. Did it feel like a million? It felt like a million people <laughs> yeah, there, yeah. minimum. But I'm quite shy, uh, quite introverted. And when you were selling these kitchens, yes. how good a salesperson were you? Really bad. <laughs> So you didn't have to actually sell the kitchen on the call. You just had to get them to say, OK, I'd like to speak to someone yes. further. Mm. And I could never get any bites, cos I'd basically ring up and go, I'm so sorry, you don't, I know you don't want a kitchen. I won't call you again. So I used to have to ring my parents' landline <laughs> every day, and my mum would put on a voice and say, yes, I'll have a kitchen, and she'd have to talk to the manager so I'd get a bite. Oh. <laughs> What type so of she's kitchen? got about nine kitchens. <laughs> <laughs> the key to the mystery is not the kitchen, it's the house, isn't it? <laughs> did the house have a kitchen? Yes. <laughs> yes, it did. And why didn't you ever see Kate in the kitchen? So in 2012, I just started stand up. So I'd go do me, me day shift, selling me kitchens and failing. Yeah. And then I'd go to a pub and do a gig where I would fail. <laughs> <laughs> if a gig didn't do very well and it was just silence for 20 minutes, did you ever end with. I don't suppose anyone wants to buy a kitchen. <laughs> 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 I'd mean, be a sad way to end, wouldn't it? <laughs> I, I don't need you to commit, I just need a bite. <laughs> so, tell us about the moment then when you actually did realise uh, yeah. that you were in the same. Uh, house. So, I'd gone down one morning and uh, Kate was in the kitchen and I was like, oh, hello, we work at the same place. And I thought, 
she'd slept with somebody in the, <laughs> in the house. So I was like, oh, oh, my God, who have you been with? And she was like, sorry, what? <laughs> what? Why are you in the house? And it was like, oh, I live here. And she was like, I live here. And it was like, oh, right, you're that room on the third floor. So when you ask the question, who have you been sleeping with? <laughs> what, what, who do you and think who ate all the porridge? And <laughs> <so>? <laughs> <laughs> but who... Who did you think that might be? Did you know other people who lived in the house? Uh, yeah, well, so there was a guy called Adam who had a pet tarantula, and I was thinking, oh, Kate, how low are your standards? Yeah. <laughs> so I presumed, oh, she's she's with Greasy Adam. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who would you like to quiz next? Jeremy. It was a technique for calming Kate down, is that right? Well, I, I present uh, Eggheads, a game quiz show, and... Uh, Sometimes contestants get nervous, and, and I noticed that Kate was nervous, and I, I tried to calm her down. And how, how did you do that? So I could see that Kate was just not in the moment. She wasn't enjoying it. And we had this discussion of whether, whether we should just proceed. But, you know, it's quite frightening, actually, to go in a question booth and you're on your own answering questions. So I said, look, do you want to see me ride my penny farthing? <gasps> and... <laughs> if this is a euphemism, then I don't want to hear it. We... We were filming Eggheads in the Riverside Studios and uh, I had cycled there on a penny farthing. Can I ask a question at this point? <laughs> Why? <laughs> I've always been a bit interested in penny farthings and then, it, for some reason, they started making them again. And I, and I bought one. So you're at the studios. We're Kate at, we're is recording. nervous. Kate is one on of the competitors. Yes. The question is, if, if Kate is feeling anxious about it, we've got a deputy, but I said, look, let's take a break and I'll show you my penny farthing. And so we went out. <laughs> I don't believe this. I would imagine, Jeremy, if anything, that might have made her a little more nervous. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was one of those funny moments. We, we went outside the studio, I unlocked it, and <laughs> I, I rode it around <laughs> inside the Riverside studio area. And at the end of it, I think Kate rather enjoyed it. Or she went, if he stops, I'll play. <laughs> <laughs> Stop laughing, you're not supposed to laugh. <laughs> uh, you didn't laugh when I cut the trunk off your elephant, did you? <laughs> <laughs> or when I killed your leopard, you just wore it. <laughs> Why were you so sure that an action that's so surreal <laughs> that, in fact, might have made her think that she'd fainted? <laughs> And was hallucinating this would be the right way to calm her down rather than say a cup of tea. <laughs> I don't know. David, do you know what? She doesn't look very nervous now. Uh, that's because I rode my BMX <laughs> around the studio. <laughs> All wrong. I know. <laughs> Are you happy now to move on to Lee Mac, the one in the middle? Yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> I, I understand the contractual duty. <laughs> So where was her topiary elephant? It was in her front garden. Have you got a history of topiary? I've got a history of, of hedge trimming, mm. and <laughs> my hedge is particularly well trimmed. Yeah. She is a, she's a neighbour, she's been in our back garden, she's seen it. How could you have got it so wrong? So what happened was, it was a very good uh, elephant, it looked like an elephant. Who, how, who? Big, how big was it? I would say... Use your hands. All right, I would say... About <laughs> 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 five foot. <laughs> Who had done it initially? Who she had done it. She had done it? Yes. OK. Yeah. So why, yeah. as someone so expert at this <laughs> kind of topiary yeah. that she could create a perfect small version of an adult <laughs> elephant, <laughs> did she ask you, yeah. someone who is mm -hmm. only good enough yeah, to do yeah. a neat hedge, <laughs> to tidy up her elephant? Uh, oh, you could just say in two words, why you? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Got two words for you. Broken arm. Broke, she had broken her arm. I know. Right. <laughs> in, fact, in fact, I think it was me that told you. <laughs> OK, so she'd broken her arm and it was urgent... <laughs> Not urgent, no. What? Not yes. urgent, but it was already getting a little bit unkempt. Basically, she'd been meaning to tidy it up, mm. then she broke her arm... Yeah. ..and she knew if she waited for her arm to heal, then it's too far gone. Exactly what you just said. OK, well, this... <laughs> I mean, this is so... 
plausible. Thank you. <laughs> I think I speak on behalf of everyone in the room when I say no further questions. <laughs> How did you manage to lop off an entire trunk? Oh, yes, that bit. <laughs> so, what happened was I did everything quite well, and then I realised, I stepped back and I thought, oh, I've taken off a bit more than I wanted on the left. So the first thing I did was thin everything else out. <laughs> so it's all to scale. But now it's starting to look like... It looks like there'd been a drought yeah. and the crops had, and the elephant was struggling. Yes. I expected Attenborough to go, he looks like he won't last the winter. <laughs> was King Charles there too? Yeah, I, uh, impressions are beneath me. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> or, or is that beyond you? <laughs> So I decided to thin everything else out and try and match it all up. And I went down, went down like that, and then I sort of slipped mm. and went straight through the trunk. Okay. Terrible. I think Go you on. could have gone for the phrase, I sort of slipped a lot earlier. <laughs> <laughs> so we need an answer. So David's team. Is Kate Amy's cohabiting colleague, Jeremy's quaking quizzer, or Lee's bush buddy? I think, okay. I think it's Amy. You think it's Amy? I don't know, you know, I mean, yeah. I think Lee could be plausible, but, like... <laughs> what did you say? Craig, Craig, Craig. I think I'm having a meltdown, but I thought Lee was playing... No, no, <laughs> no, 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 Craig, no. Yeah. Craig, I, I'm a big fan of yours. <laughs> and, and I've never said this before on the show, but I like you so much, it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, living, in, living in multi occupancy homes. Students do that a lot. Yeah, though. ships that pass in the night. What's wrong with Jeremy's claim? He's, a, he's known as a cyclist. Yes, he's known as a cyclist. I don't doubt that he may own a penny farthing. Yeah. What I doubt is that, you know, in a busy recording day, a contestant is nervous and Jeremy suggests, and this suggestion is accepted, that the best thing to do to calm the nervous quizzer down <laughs> is to cycle around in front of them on a penny farthing and that'll, and then, then she'll be fine. The way you just said that, though, you've actually sold that to me now. I think it's probably... <laughs> No. Craig, yeah. Craig. I'm a big fan of yours. <laughs> so I'm going to help you out. It's not Jeremy. <laughs> sorry, sorry, no, but, but that's oh. it. You don't have any more clues. <laughs> OK, David, it's not... time to make your decision. Look, obviously, now Lee said that, I'm full of doubt. <laughs> but you think it's Amy. Hi, Amy. I think it's Amy. And, and I, I, I think your, your judgment of truth <laughs> might need recalibrating. <laughs> so you're saying that it's Amy? Yeah. OK, Amy. OK. Kate, would you please reveal your true identity? I'm Kate, and Jeremy, calm me down. So <laughs> Kate is Jeremy's quaking quizzer. Thank you very much, Kate. Well done, Kate. Brilliant. Which brings us to our final round, Quickfire Lies, and we start with... It's David. <clears throat> Possession. Ah, now then, there's a box just behind you, David. Um, could you, first of all, mm -hmm. take the item out of the box and then read the card? <laughs> 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 this is the worst ventriloquist act I've ever yeah. seen. <laughs> this is Big Goose. You can see your lips moving. <laughs> um... <laughs> this is Big Goose. I was given her by a fairground worker as an apology after I snagged my chinos riding his helter skelter. Right, please, T. <laughs> this year or...? Uh, last year. The, the Helter Skelter people normally don't give prizes. Why did he have that? Well, he was working at a place where some of the other things there gave prizes. Yeah. I think that... <laughs> so yeah. he said to you, I'm really sorry that you snagged your chinos. Wait there, I'm just going to try and throw three table tennis balls into a, <laughs> into a fish bowl. <laughs> I, I might be 
some while. So just... <laughs> Was that Big Goose's name when he arrived in your family, or is that something with which you christened him or her? Well, sorry. <laughs> uh, sure, it's not bird flu. <laughs> <laughs> Talk us through the event. Yes. What motivated you to do it at all? Because I don't see you as a helter-skelter kind of guy. Well, I was there with my daughter. She wanted to go on the Helter Skelter. I said I'd go with her and we shared a mat. So you've gone all the way to the top. Did you have to have a little break halfway up? No, I don't remember that. No, I was, you know... Oh, you blacked out. Quite... <laughs> <laughs> you get to the top of the Helter Skelter and you say, look, darling, one day all this will be yours. <laughs> and you sit down on the mat, you pop her in front of you and you begin to hurtle round and round and round. What happens then? To be honest, I was trying to manage the pace to a certain extent. How were you doing that? Just with my feet. Putting them out to the sides? A little bit. Oh. Well, it's your fault you snagged them. It didn't say you couldn't have your feet to the full width of the channel provided. <laughs> it, it didn't say we won't rip your chinos, did it? I would say it's an implied contract with any such entertainment activity mm. that your clothing won't be damaged. What if the roller coaster... I think that would stand up in court. <laughs> and do you know what? So did the fairground worker. And he thought, <laughs> we'd better head off trouble here. A major celebrity <laughs> has damaged his extremely expensive, beautifully cut trousers. Oh. Was there someone else there? Goosey! <laughs> Goose him as hard as you can! <laughs> and do you consider Big Goose to be adequate compensation? Never mind that. Do you consider yourself a major celebrity? <laughs> <laughs> when you went round the Helder Scale, yeah. you caught your chinos on something. Yeah, yeah. Did you have any chance to see what it was? I think it was a little bit of sticking out metal. Did you scream in agony when it, when it caught no, you? No, it didn't hurt, because I don't have any nerve endings in my trousers. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what, David? I don't think you have any feeling in your trousers whatsoever. <laughs> So what do you think, Amy? Is he telling the truth? I think it's a lie. He's handling that goose as if he hasn't handled a goose before. <laughs> I think he's handling it with, with affection. That was the key... That was the key insight. Oh, no. Obviously, the obvious affection I'm between so him and the goose. I'm sorry about this big goose. <laughs> so, what are you going to say, Lee? Well, we're gravitating towards lie, aren't we? I think lie. You think it's yeah. a lie? OK. David, was it true or was it a lie? It was, as far as I recall, a lie. <laughs> yes, it's a lie. David wasn't given big goose at the fair. That noise signals time is up. It's the end of the show. I can reveal that it's a draw, with two points each. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Good night. Meet 18 new candidates. They're uh, going out there to smash it, as long as they tidy up afterwards. Press red for The Apprentice on BBC iPlayer. Next year, more from Lee. It's not going out.